Now, while I frequently, for our businesses, our business clients use genuine NetGate devices running PFSense when we set them up, the reason being it's easy to deploy, it's easy to keep a spare on a shelf, like this one right here, uh, just a basic spare. If I need to download a config and put it in there, I have things at the ready to replace them. Uh, that's great, and I know that there's gonna be 100% compatibility, and that's wonderful as well. But what if you have special use cases or you go, hey, I got this HP ProLiant ML110 G7 just sitting around collecting dust. What should I do with it? Build a custom PFSense with it. I am all for people who want to custom build things and tinker. Uh, people think that I push only for that. It depends on whether or not it's a business use case, a special use case, but you want to have things at the ready. And maybe you have five of these at the ready and that's a good use case as well, especially for internal IT teams going, I don't want to you know, have to go buy a piece of hardware. I have these wonderful pieces of hardware that still have some life in them, but aren't real productive for other things. Uh, this particular ProLiant does have ECC memory in it, a nice Intel Xeon processor. We'll get a little bit more in specs later. Has a RAID array in it, which we're actually gonna use. And uh, this has a special use case. Now, the important part, and one, yes, this is just a standard Intel build, and Intel's well-supported in the BSD, and therefore well supported with PFSense. And you'll notice if you look at even the higher end NetGate products, they're all using Intel systems. But the network card choices, this is where things can get a little bit tricky, but are very important if you want full features. And what I mean by that is I don't just say get an Intel network card, that's not quite specific enough. And I'm gonna show you how you figure out which network card to get. And I'll show you which one we have right here. So over on the FreeBSD manual pages under alt queuing, and this is an easy way to start. You want something that supports traffic shaping and a lot of other features on there. So we can go over to the alt queue list, and then we go down here and we can look for the drivers. Now the drivers on the particular board of this HP ML, the card and the drivers that we'll be using are the EM. It has two Intel network cards that fall under the EM name. And you can go down, here's a list of, I don't know exactly which ones are in here, but you can see all the different drivers supported by the EM driver set. And then you can see the features that are in there. The second one, the one that was in my hand, the four port network card, uh, this is the Intel uh, quad port adapter. So you got four on here and it doesn't just support alt Q traffic shaping. We go a step further and it uh, completely supports, so you can see right here, the IGB driver provides support for PCI Express gigabit ethernet adapters based on has a chipset names. Uh, furthermore, it supports TCP segmentation offload, all adapters, identification LEDs adapters supported by IG driver can be controlled via the LED API for localization purposes. So you can pass through other commands for that if that matters to you. Uh, jumbo frames, etc. And let's take a little bit closer look at the card because hey, it looks cool. And when you're looking at it, you notice it's not like your normal cheap like real tech cards. You have these beefy heat sinks on there. Well, that's the support it has for the hardware offloading to make sure it's adequately cooled. And if it's routing and maybe you even go through and bond a couple of these together to make it even faster or do any type of hardware offloading, you want to make sure that this is well supported. So uh, these cards are great. I'll leave a link to the model number for here, uh, but you can see why that matters. And this is where people sometimes have problems because they'll pick a card, even though it's Intel. And I'll say there are Intel cards that they do make that may not be supported fully in FreeBSD. I believe the IX series don't have any traffic shaping support on there. So uh, certain Intel cards are, certain Intel cards not. Now this does matter much when it comes to your uh, built-in one on your motherboard because that's not where those high level features are. Therefore, there is actually a difference between some of the server uh, network cards such as this versus the desktop ones that are gonna lack those features, but those features are kind of irrelevant on the desktop side. When it comes to just raw routing speed, sure, from a line level speed, yes, we can route at a gig. That's not a problem where those issues come in. Like I said, you go, oh, I wanna apply traffic shaping and hardware offloading. That's where those big chips come in to actually uh, provide some horsepower. Back over to this machine here. This has, and it's not a RAID array as in controlled by a RAID controller, it's just controlled on the board, but we happen to have, and I just had these laying around, just like this service laying around, uh, and three drives in here. So how did I configure them? Well, that's a neat thing about PFSense. It supports ZFS, and why would you need three hard drives in it for ZFS, three 500 gig drives? Well, 
uh, this is actually going to be built for one of my friends, and he's going to be doing a lot of packet capturing, a lot of sniffing, because he does all kinds of pen testing. Uh, yes, it's for Xavier, for those of you that watch the channel, and he needed something that would be able to do longer term, large packet captures right on the box, be able to handle gigabit speed while doing IDS, and just some general experimentation. He does have a gig fiber connection, and uh, he needs something that can route it that fast and pack capture lots of packets. So we got a couple different card options in here. Uh, this will allow him to take different devices that he wants to further examine, turn on full packet capture, and not worry about running out of space very quickly. I mean, of course, you could fill it up, but uh, you can capture a lot more than you can on a small little box. And when you want to apply a lot of different filtering rules, you want to be able to have you know, that full hardware offload. And there's some new things coming that I believe is not supported on all network cards, but should be supported on this network card in the upcoming versions of Siracata and upcoming 2.5 series of PF Sense. So this adds a little bit of future for more tinkering that's going to be on there. Now let's talk real quick about, before we boot this up, how you do ZFS install. And I'm not going to walk you through the whole installer. Uh, I've got videos on that. There's not much difference, but this is the part where you get to select ZFS as a file system option uh, for this. So let's walk through that real quick. So when you get to the part where you're setting up the drive, you're going to choose Auto ZFS, then select Pool Type Disk, choose RAID Z1, select the drives for the pool, the three drives we have here, and then just select Proceed with Installation. And from there, the system will go and have you all set up and configured uh, for ZFS and go through the normal install process. So pretty straightforward there. So uh, I'm going to button this up real quick and let's turn it on. I like hearing that sound. That's how I know even if there wasn't a screen connected, it has sung the song of its people and it is booted. So now we can log into it here, plug my laptop in. I'm not even bothering putting a switch in for this. This is just directly connected to the uh, interface. So we can uh, wait till it gets an IP address here on my laptop. All right, and we can log into it. All right, now I've already ran through the wizard and assigned a couple interfaces on this. Um, WAN and LAN, I will leave the name the same. I added two more interfaces. This is the add-in card that we put in, the IGB0, IGB1. And uh, I could have called them anything. I just called them that because I also have a sticker on the back that also matches. So whatever uh, you want to plug these in, you'll know exactly which interface you're plugged into. Now, this system is running a uh, the latest 2.44 p3 release so depending on when you're watching this that is the latest release as of right now um, then we have the intel xeon cpu e31220 at 3.1 gigahertz and we do have the aes and i support for crypto and i know there's always this controversy but doesn't pf sense require that with the new 2.5 no they remove support for it but yes it can help when you're doing uh open vpn and aes and i support can help with the crypto support. And it is in many, many chips, as old as the system is, it's in here. Scroll down a little further, you see so much storage space with the ZFS drive. So let's log in real quick. Now I've already got SSH turned on, so let's just SSH into this. Eight, and we'll go ZFS uh, status, whoops, list, there we go had it wrong. Uh, well, you can see right here, it's showing the same thing. So we see all the drives and it's zpool status. And you can see the RAID zpool online and all working perfectly fine. Now, I don't really do much with the command line on ZFS uh, on these. You could snapshot before upgrade. You could do some of those other features. It's just kind of novel to be able to use ZFS and have it set up as a RAID array uh, when you want to have a few drives together. And obviously, I could have just striped them uh, to make it one giant fast array. But you know, what if one of these older drives in here fail? I just have these three 500s in here. And I doubt he's going to exceed that capacity when saving PCAP files. Uh, but who knows? You know, it, it is obviously a possibility, but not too big of a deal. Now, it comes to memory, four gigs of RAM. Is that enough? Actually, yes. Uh, even for us here at our office, which is many networks and as many ver instances, so to speak, because for each interface, you spin up another one of Siracata. Um, so you can watch that interface. We're not exceeding the four gigs of RAM. So yes, that is adequate for this. I see some people overbuild these systems and a much lesser system with much less horsepower will still route at gigabit, even with Siracata. This is even faster than what's needed. But hey, like I said, the computer was just kind of laying around. 
And Sericata also being multi-threaded, um, the four CPU with four cores, that's fine. That's enough to distribute it across here. Matter of fact, uh, for a little while, this was actually in use here at our office as our main PF Sense box when we were doing some testing and had it before we swapped over to the more recent video you may have seen uh, with the SG5100, which we currently use at our office, which by the way, I believe this processor and this is even faster than that, and it still has no problem routing it uh, with Sericata and lots of mixed traffic. But like I said, this was just a quick overview. Um, from here, all the other things apply for setting this up, for doing any of the other videos like I've done. I've got videos on any individual thing that I'll link to. I've got an entire getting started with and building out VLANs with this. Uh, but I just wanna show you know the use case. There are plenty of special use cases and picking the network card that's an important aspect because that's where people like, oh no, it doesn't detect my card. What do I do? Do I have to load a bunch of drivers? Yeah, you could do that. And I'm not, I just don't bother loading extra drivers because that can be a real pain in the butt. Then you update, then you gotta load drivers again or there's some incompatibility. Uh, just going out and choosing like from the list that I'll leave a link to below and finding a network card. And like I said, you can get this nice four port card with full hardware offloading and everything. And I've seen them going for between 30 and $40, sometimes as much as 50, depends on the market supply of them. And if you hunt around at some recycling place, if you're lucky enough to be close to one that'll let you uh, wander through there, sometimes you'll just have piles of them you can pick up for even cheaper or just you know find them around um, but go through that list find a good card that is supported out of the box it saves you the headache of loading drivers and by the way you may have noticed in that list of uh, for those wondering of can it do 10 gig yes absolutely it can and yes there are 10 gig ones in that list as well uh, there's quite a bit of 10 gig support in BSD uh, but be forewarned uh, make sure it supports if you need this feature anyways um, I have a 10 gig card I was going to test as part of this video just to throw it in there and show it working, but I realized it only wanted to work at 10 gig, not at uh, 1 gig. It, it was one, it was the driver support was kind of limited on there. So if you are hunting down a uh, different cards for that particular use case, you may find that they do or don't work properly or fully inside of there. Like I said, use that as a reference guide for if you're doing the custom build, but uh, have at it. Like I said, we have a special use case. I in like this one here, it's a definitely good way to repurpose some old hardware. If you're uh, on a budget building your home lab, you want to dive in deep on PF Sense and start really learning. I tell you, uh, finding used hardware that is, uh, I, I don't know what else to do with this thing. <laughs> like we had a few of these, these are old servers we pulled out for a client that got new equipment. Um, a little server slash kind of server. But if you're looking for some deals on some hardware, uh, if you aren't lucky enough to have somewhere close or just have one laying around, uh, do reach out. We have an affiliate for Tech Supply Direct. Uh, we've sent people their way. They do have a lot of uh, slightly used servers that you can start building on and build your custom PF Sense for. And you can find some that are you know somewhat budget friendly. Keep an eye out for deals on there. And then our offer code and affiliate code gets you another 10% off. And thanks.